Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you might be. Welcome. This is Newf Newcomb with a special presentation for you this afternoon. It is at least afternoon in my neck of the woods here in Alberta, Canada. It is good to be back behind the camera, and I can't wait to do this interview for you guys because I have an extremely talented individual who's going to be on this podcast with me today. Um, because of the time zones, it makes things very difficult sometimes to coordinate these things, but uh, we managed to get this day to work out, and it worked good for me because I actually have the day off. So without any further ado, guys, I want to introduce, he is probably one of the most, uh, like I said, he's probably one of the best designers I've ever seen in the business. He's worked for some of the biggest brands in the business. Uh, he's transitioned sort of for uh, from kind of a, you know, a smaller platform to, like I said, he's he's taken on a life of its own, and he's going to tell you more about all of that, where he's been, where he is, and where he's going. I'm referring to the one and the only. My, I call him a friend as well, and I'm very privileged to have known him for many, many years. The one, the only, guys. We know him as Pope Art. I see. Welcome I, to the show, my brother. I remember, I remember meeting new log, log type of guy. Right, it's amazing how far we've actually gone back now. Because I mean, even I, I am still shocked that I've been in this podcast scene for uh, well over ten years, and I've probably known you at some point for the better part of that. It's gotta. I'm trying to. I'm trying it's to put a, be, a number on yeah, it. It's got to be closing in on seven or eight for sure. It must be because um, how long? I think I've been on. Because I remember you back from like you know mooch and crap and the crossfire days and stuff like that, mm -hmm. you know, uh, like exactly. a long time ago. And um, in, in fact, that's where it, it was. Speaking of mooch, it was it was him that kind of tinkered on the borderlines of giving me my name, you know, that, which was originally the Xbox Pope. Remember there, but them <laughs> days um, when we used to be like pure Xbox fanatics, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Well, that's right, guys. For some of you who are still trying to um, get your head around his sort of new rebranding, he used to be known by many as Xbox Pope. He went by that moniker for many, many years. But due to, uh, I would say, I guess you're transitioning to different projects, uh, just that moniker, just uh, it kind of pigeonholed you a little bit. So I'm sure there's a there's good reason behind losing that name. Well, I'll, I'll tell you how it, how it changed. It's a, It's quite an interesting story, actually. So I, I kept getting requests for people to say, oh, can you do as a PlayStation controller, you know? Uh, mm -hmm. but, and I, and I, and I kind of did. And I think I did something for um, Mortal Kombat. And then it was like, so I, I still had the, the name Xbox Pope and I did all this PlayStation work with Mortal Kombat. And someone was copied copy Ed Boone in, so he came back and said, oh, that's amazing. But why is it an Xbox dude doing PlayStation, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I was like, oh, God, I, I'm doing all this work for PlayStation, but my name's Xbox Pope, you know? So hence hence why I changed it. Um, and, and because everyone kept shortening it and just calling us Pope, I just thought, well, what can I find, you know? Um, Pope and art. And then I thought of another thing. I thought, well, well, you got this art culture called pop art, you know? Right. So, hence, hence why I, I put the lower E in there. So yeah. it's a play on two words, really. Um, so yeah, and from that very first day, my very first controller, which was a Gears of War one, it's just went crazy ever since, you know, um, to the point yeah, so now I'm just, just doing crazy things. Let's hit the rewind button. Let's take it back to that. So like I said, mm -hmm. I, I can't remember exactly – how I came across you, like I said, it was somewhere through the through these uh, YouTube channels and, and all of the podcasts. I remember that you used to frequent uh, some of the chats and different things, and and through social media, we'd see some of those designs, and they kind of uh, they kind of went viral within our social circle. So, exactly, what was the like, kind of what got you into this, and uh, what what was you what do you remember being that first design? Was it the Gears of War one? It was, yeah. Uh, someone. Someone within the co uh, podcast, I kind of think of his name. It might have been something on the lines of like Iron Wolf or something daft like that. Don't yeah, there remember. used to be a guy named Iron Wolf. Yeah, he hasn't been around for years, I don't think. 
Well, he he was the kid who kind of triggered it off in a sense because mm-hmm. he was like, "Can you do it?" And, and at the time, I was designing for huge brands around the world, doing other things, not anything gaming related, you know. And um, so I kind of thought, well, no, not really, because <laughs> like, I hadn't done it before, you know. Um, so I kind of give it a give it a try, and then somebody else was, "Oh, well, can you do me one? Can you do me one?" And it just and that's how it just, I think. but it's weird to kind of look back at some of my really old work and you think how shit it looks, you know, you just think, oh God, how much trash that is. <laughs> well, I've, I've never met an artist who didn't feel the same way that when you go back and look at your own art, we're, we're the most critical people of it. And I think yeah. it's because we always have an expectation that we can do better. We can be better. Um, you know, even, even for me, I, I have a visual arts diploma, but I haven't really dabbled with art for a few years, but, uh, that was probably one of the reasons that drove me away from not being more active in it is because I always would look at my art and people would say, that looked really good. And I like it. And I'm like, man, I think it looks like, it looks horrible. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's yeah. a really hard thing to get around sometimes. Like, I guess you look back at it now cause you have far more experience and probably can see like a flaw or maybe I should have used a different color scheme or or what have you, but, you know, I think it's notorious that everything, and I really do mean this from the bottom of my heart, I think like, you know, if you showed me 10 designs tomorrow, I'd probably be like, man, nine of those designs are absolutely just off the chain. Like, you know, and and comparing the stuff that you did just recreationally, just doing it for for fans and requests, and then looking at the guys who were getting paid big bucks to do the similar work for, you know the big companies and i'm like my god yeah. pope is destroying you guys in terms of like how many fans have come to you and said that like pope my god your stuff is just incredible and it and it uh, needs to be i used to i used to get a well not a, a little little bit of trouble with because you know i built some good friendships within the the um within xbox you know like phil and mm-hmm. aaron and in the usual you know but i also got quite familiar with the hard ho- hardware team you know and um, mm-hmm. e- even those guys would would admire what I do, what I what I would do, you know. Um, mm-hmm. I think I think the the Halo Elite controller was inspired by some designs that I had done. Um, so I actually inspired the team to create that controller, you know. And and I think one of them was telling us that even pushed the limits. I, I, I forced them to push the limits a bit, just so they could kind of get close, you know. Um, because I, I, I've always looked mm-hmm. at controllers and what I do. At first, it was, let's put a graphic on a controller, you know, the usual. And then the more right. I kind of thought thought about it, because I've worked in retail and, and, and brand, um, you know, my job at the time was to, to take a brand and, and help them make billions of dollars, you know, in the form of certain things that happen within a store, you know. Uh, well, that, that kind of involves a lot of psychology, a lot of consumer insights, a lot of a lot of knowledge within the inside, you know. Um, so I kind of t- turned all that knowledge that I had and created a, a system of creating a controller using all them techniques. So basically what happened was is the design started to not be a graphic on a controller, but it's telling stories. So that's kind of what where it's all led to now is I actually tell stories on controllers versus so it's almost like you know there's the controller it smashed itself through the screen it's went through the game it's it's that all it's experienced all them emotions that you've also yeah. felt within the game come back out and there's the design you know that's right. It still represents the title, but it isn't just a big like where you're borrowing, borrowing, I guess, um, already preset designs and just, you know, reworking them into a, uh-huh. a working piece. You're you're literally trying to interpret um, the popular brands and, and make it work. I mean, I remember uh, one of your first I think it was one of your first big production pieces was the um, the needler controller, correct? Yeah. I, do, do you know when I when I created that? I think someone, someone dared is. I think it was it was a dare, and I, and I like because I only spend ten minutes when I do these designs, mm-hmm. um, so I, I just quickly I, I just quickly did it, 
And then I just shared it on social media and everyone was just like, oh my God, that's the most amazing control I've ever seen. <laughs> mm-hmm. So it, it kind of just went from there, really. Um, and, and I think sometimes designs are like that, you know, you think, oh God, people are going to love this one. They're going to go wild for it, you know. And then right. you share it and it's like, it's got about 10 likes. <laughs> And then like other ones where you think, well, I, I can't be honest. I'll just post it out anyway, you know, and people love it, you know. Well, um, I, I think that that goes with any art form or medium, whether it's movies or music, it happens the same way. I mean, yeah. you'll hear that all the time when uh, when a band puts out a song, they go, oh, God, that wasn't really one of my best work. It's probably not going to do that well. And it turns into being like a big number one hit. Yeah. So, I mean, there, there is no, I guess there is no set recipe for a success other than all you can do is put your best foot forward and put it out there and you see where it lands but you know pope i mean how 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 do you look at the controller and the accessories industry right now it seems to be huge because i mean it used to always be about the games but if you've gone into any uh gaming store in the past little while even the big box stores or retail like best buy over here in north america just kind of depleted all their stuff but one thing that still remains and you're lucky in this regard is that the stores, while they're getting rid of physical games, do, do seem to be adding a lot more space we see now for controllers and headsets and yeah. PC accessories. And again, there's a massive void and room for stuff that stands out that isn't just, um, you know, this isn't another black, white, and blue controller. You know, they they're have designs that, like you said, that, yeah. speak, that speak to the audience and speak to the game. So, I mean, I guess that's that's got to be a huge thing for you now. It is, and and I think you kind of you t- you kind of tipped on it a little bit in the sense that physical games are kind of going not not forever, but you know there's a, a lot of this cloud gaming now, and there's a lot of you know links to your you know you can link a controller to your to your Steam Deck or to your Nitro uh, Deck to your this that you know your TV screen and everything else. Well. You know, I think people still need that comfort factor, you know. They still need to feel comfortable playing a game. So whether that's an Xbox controller or a you know, PlayStation controller or, or whatever kind of controller, it, they're still always going to be needed, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think within that sort of industry, I, I can sort of fill that market with... Mm-hmm. With, with with what I do. But what you also have to remember with my designs, even though I've, I'm kind of going global now, there's still going to be an exclusivity. There's still going to be a rareness about them, you know? Um, right. Yeah. So they, they are going to be quite sort of tricky to to, to kind of still yeah, and get they, your hands you know, on, I, you know? I wish I could put my hands on one, you know, because, I, I you know, I think one of the things you'd mentioned to me is you're kind of going for not just uh, – a more limited run, but you're also going for, I guess, a higher quality because there's a lot of mar- there's a lot of brands on the market right now where yeah, sure their controllers look good, uh, but they don't necessarily feel and operate very well, and that's and that's no. kind of a huge thing. And and uh, if you can get your amazing visions, but on a controller that can stand up to. Um, you know, a little bit of a, a little bit of a punishing regime, uh, especially for gamers, and that's that's an extra bonus. And that that was always the when I first started this, I thought you just you just get controllers made anywhere. Literally, you just go somewhere and and they get made. Honestly, it's it's the hardest thing on the planet, right? I I, I even used to speak to the guys at Microsoft and these things. Can you put us in touch with someone who can make these things, you know? And it's like, mm-hmm. well, un- unless you're going to, like, have 350,000 of them made, they'll kind of not entertain you, you know? Right, you. right. But, Which, but, yeah, it but just I would, costs But I already, I already need one. I already need 10, you know? Oh, well, so what tends to happen is then you have to kind of use, you know, it's easier to say this word, but it's not dis- discriminating against people like this, but the, the, the little sort of garage outlets, you know, the little right. smaller stores, which can also take a risk factor that you, you kind of fingers crossed that the quality is going to be okay, you know, or, you know, is, are they going to do a good job? Because when, it, when you start getting into custom controllers, these things are not cheap. You know, mm-hmm. it's not like it's not like everyone in the in the system is trying to make a huge sum of money. 
it's just literally it's an expensive process you know um so so when you finally got it out there you just kind of keep your fingers crossed so, so all all the time i was doing this i was trying to find people who are like could do bigger numbers could do better quality could do and it, it was such a minefield to sort of get through you know um yeah so and, and you know you, you all this, all these stages that you're doing, you're putting your trust in the manufacturer. You're putting your trust in the the, the logistics. That you know, is it going to get shipped there? Is it going to you know you know get get stuck in customs somewhere? Is it going to you know? And it, there's so much that people don't see behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. And it's right. just a it's a simple controller. You know, it's like oh my god, it's just a it's yeah. But like you said, it's. Uh... So from the from the moment you make the design to the time it potentially gets made is what kind of a turnaround roughly? Like you're looking at you, you know you're looking at six weeks, six to eight weeks, you know, okay. from uh, thingy. But then yeah, but like you mentioned, uh, I mean, your design gets shipped off, but then they have did somebody in the, like you're you're involved in the art side. Are you also involved in the um, what do you call the functionality side, like? say like where the buttons are placed or the kind of um, the rubbers or the kind of things you want to use in the actual build itself or did they kind of do the build and just say well Pope, you just throw a design on this thing no because if in the early days you only have a certain selection where you can go to buy thumbsticks or buttons right. and you, ha you haven't got an ultimate rainbow of colors you've only got almost a little bit more extensive colors than xbox design lab you know um so what what are you, if you if you were using pink buttons but they didn't match the pink in your artwork mm -hmm. you'd have to kind of tweak things tweak the artwork tweak tweak you know certain things to sort of sew it all gel together um but the the problem there is sometimes some buttons that just that just don't perform very well you know uh, because of obviously where they might have come from. So then people would say, oh, well, my buttons are sticking, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so you you just sort of, your, your limitations of what you could use were just getting less and less and harder and harder. Right. Well, obviously where I am now is I can do anything I want, literally any pantone mm -hmm. color to any thumbstick, button, trigger, doesn't matter. I can, so I'm not, I'm not restricted. I'm not restricted. Like I probably would have done if had I been working at Microsoft, let's say, you know, cause they've only got a certain palette color because of obviously the, the, the mass producing, you know, they're, they're, they're churning these things out constantly. So um, it's not like they can kind of create a rainbow of colors, you know, uh, versus what I can do, which is I, I basically get them made right from the ground up like so, so they come from a mold you know yeah it's pretty good that's awesome stuff man so um so that's kind of a little bit of the background itself uh tell us you know kind of what what is the current projects right now and tell us a little bit about the current mm -hmm. website that you're uh um promoting it looks like you have it on your shirt there it's uh i'm not Practical. overly familiar with the brand but i have heard of it crkd yeah, so it's obviously it's it's pronounced cracked. Um, oh, okay, cracked. There we go. <laughs> well, yeah. see, I didn't know that. There you go. Well, well, well what happened was so uh, so just over a year ago, you know, mm -hmm. I was kind of doing my thing, you know, posting on social media and and whatnot, you know, and um, I kind of just got this message from this random dude, you know, and um, he's like, "Oh, can we have a chat?" I was like, right, okay. And, um, I, I've got, we're doing this you know, new hardware company and blah, blah, blah. And there's there's some people within that industry, this cracked, that are that are like super iconic in the gaming industry. I'll, I'll not mention their names, but they're, 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 they're very top tier, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and even I was like, shut up, no way. This kind of this kind of be real, you know, and uh, it was real, and um, so I got chatting to these guys, you know, and they said, "Well, look, we love Pope, you know, we'll, 
everyone who who we know and associate loves Pope as well, you know. So you fancy coming on board as being like one is our creative director, but two, where you know we can we can support Pope Art, we can mm-hmm. keep him as a se- separate entity, and also promote him as well. So there's almost right. like two sides to the story here, you know. Um, so I was like, well, this sounds cool, yeah. And then I found out, but Brad already sits next to like some. Lord of the Rings, you know, Middle Earth. And then it sit next to like limited run games and Dark Horse publishers. And I was like, holy crap, like, oh my God, I'm, I'm inside this huge mountain of big brands, you know. And we're all like in this little circle of um, of people that kind of watch out for each other and, and kind of and, and, and work together, you know. Um, so it's almost like I, I, came, I became part of this exclusive elite sort of organization club thing, you know. Um, and then I started just doing designs um, internally. And it, mm-hmm. next thing I was, I was, you know, I'm working with comic artists like Mike Manola, um, create my own range of, of controllers. But where, where it differs is obviously you've got the likes of Xbox controllers, PlayStation, Obviously, we're cracked. We we kind of create our own controllers, you know. So this is a, a typical poor bar blossom, you know. Um, so it's only this. It's literally the size. Whereas before, so like there, there's an there's an iPhone. It's okay. literally, it's exactly the same and those size. Have, you know? um, they they have lithium batteries in there. Oh, they'll have they'll have some super duper battery. I don't really know, but I know they've got like so they've got zero stick drift thumbs. Yeah. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to get my camera go out. Stop it. You can just take the toppers off. Swap them, mm-hmm. you know. Put your little, little toppers on. So you've got zero stick drift. You've got, like, haptic buttons. So it's, it, inside of this, it, it's, it's got some really top-tier quality mechanics inside of it, you know. Mm-hmm. But the beauty of Vel is, like, I don't know if you just see. It's a little, little, yeah. little symbol there. So once you download the app, you get your phone. And you scan it like that. Yeah. And it'll tell you. It'll tell you what number you are. Oh, that's so, cool. So how exclusive you are? Um, are you? Are you? Are you sort of platinum? Are you silver? What not? So then, when it comes so to everything, everything's a limit, limited run essentially. And then once once that run is produced, that's it. They're, that's they're it. done on the line. And that's it. So the, the so technically speaking, this could become one of the rarest controllers. In ten years' time, let's say, right? When, you know, when when you've got the whole collection out, you know, um, it, it's so th- there will be bigger numbers, obviously, on certain certain ones, and then there'll be right. smaller numbers on other ones. You know, it's it's just to keep that sort of rarity. You know, it's it's almost like you know when you collect, um, you know, like your Pokemon cards or your your baseball right. cards or or whatever it is. Yeah. It, it's it's almost the same principle, but it's just in the form of a, a controller, you know? Oh. Um, and obviously that works the same for, you know, the Nitro deck. Yeah, that's cool. Um, that's what I was looking at, the Nitro deck. So, yeah, so that's, that's that's clear pretty, one, obviously. Well, it, this, this was kind of the pro one, you know? Yeah. Um, this has got the, the, the buttons up there. I mean, I have got this one, which I can show you, which is the, oh, the Hellboy, which, which is the Hellboy one, which has kind of got the mm-hmm. stuff down there. But... Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing because, you know, you just get your switch screen, chuck, chuck yep. it in there, and there you go, you're, you're, you're away, you know, and you're, you're just nice. gaming. Um, and obviously, they you know, they can come with custom pop designs or maybe if we're working with a brand or an influencer, we can, we can tailor it. Okay. Um, but the beauty with, obviously, the Neo is the fact I've got this beautiful you get the large canvas. You know, I haven't got any obstacles in the way where it's, you know, so I can tell my stories, you know, and keep the designs really unique and special yeah. and tailored. Um, to, to, which, to, which is why, the, the, um, is there any any work for like, um, you, or can you tell me at this point, is, is there something in, in the works potentially for um, console faceplates or, or wraps potentially being that, you know, if you look at the Series X in particular and PlayStation doing the, uh, 
you know, the, the sides for the PlayStation 5, but like that gives you a lot of real estate to work with compared to the small surface of a lot of these controllers. It, it, it does, but I, now I've technically got my own hardware. Mm -hmm. So th this is what gives me the flexibility to, 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 to produce a top professional piece of kit. Right. With, with unlimited, you know, I can, I can tailor that pink to any pink I want. So literally, I'm not like, oh, well, it has to be Pantone 631, and that's it. End of story. Right. You know, I can literally tailor this controller to any color, which mm -hmm. I can't do on I can't do on the other um, pieces of hardware. But it's not that I don't do still work for projects for Xbox and PlayStation because I right. I still can. You know, it's just certain jobs. If you know if if there was a slight sort of conflict of interest, then fair enough. You right, know? But, I, I hear you. Yeah, you know that that, that kind of gets aimed out at the first instance, you know. But the the beauty, I think, what a I, I've been quite lucky, uh, Noof, that I haven't been I haven't been an ass. I haven't been a, a, a yes. I, I I tend to keep Pope a little bit naughty. He's 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 on that sort of line where. He's doing exactly what you've just done there. You've, you've literally smiled. So he's he's doing that on purpose because I'm trying to create that smile action in the face because we see so many shit. You see so much shit on the, on the line at the minute. You know, there's wars going on. There's there's poverty. There's things happening in so many different angles that I think people sometimes forget to laugh. You know, or forget to smile because there's so much going on that. I tend to not get myself involved in them sort of elements and just keep it purely as let's just have a laugh, you know, tell us your best joke guys, you know, just, just do this. And um, so, so that's kind of what I do even with my designs, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's all about having them, them fun moments where is it going to make somebody laugh? Is it going to make someone smile? Is it going to make someone happy? And I and I think because I've achieved that, that's why I get a lot of. I almost well, sit at the round. I almost sit at the round table of the gaming world. Like I'm quite close to a lot of CEOs and and stuff. Because I, I definitely have an idea that I think you need to incorporate on a controller at some point because I think it represents a lot of us at one point in time in life. You literally do a controller with like a potato on the side yeah. with a controller in its hand, the old couch potato theme. Yeah, yeah. Well, I see. Cool. Well, you, you, I don't even think of that as like bizarre anymore because I get asked, "Can I do baked beans controllers? Can I do blocks, <laughs> I of, block, yeah, you blocks of cheese?" Yeah, I thought of Jez Corden. All I could do was laugh because Jez can, is always promoting the beans. Can you uh, do Peppa Pig? Can you do? Honestly, the amount of requests are, are you know, bizarre requests I get. And, yeah. and to be fair, because because I'm a. a you know, I'm not over sensitive person. I'm I'm really laid back, and I'm just you know anything for a laugh. I'm quite happy just to do it if I have the time to, you know, because right, right. it's just it's just it's just a bit of humor, you know. Um, so and that's kind well, of how well, I of that, also, then, uh, Pope. Obviously, like, do you? How, how does this process work then? Obviously, you got the controller in place. You have your design uh -huh. program. So, do they ask you in particular then to create? a certain style of uh, like we want this or we want that, or do you just kind of go here, here are a bunch of designs I'm working on and they put them through a board and, and pick them out and see which one they, because at some point, like your, all your designs are great, but like you say, like not every design either is going to be an absolute hit. Some designs, while you might think they're fantastic, you know, like they go into the stores and, and they probably wouldn't resonate and they might sit there mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, it's a big gamble for companies to, to put products out there when they go, man, like, you know, we, we might be like if we sell like a hundred of these things, even though, it, like I said, the graphic design yeah. itself might look absolutely amazing, but it's it's like, like Nintendo and some of these third parties that do their controllers and like some controllers yes. have Zelda, some have Mario, some have Toadstool. And I'm sure that the Mario controllers, for example, probably sell four or five times as much as something that has like toadstool on the corner, you know what I mean? Yeah, it, it, not not really. I, I, again, I'm quite lucky in the sense that a lot of businesses and and and, and companies 
just say no just leave it to pope just, just trust them it, it's like whatever he does mm -hmm. it, it'll always it'll always like someone will always want it you know right. um so I, I, i've been quite fortunate especially when i've worked with you know big games like um when I've worked with you know AA or if I've worked with three four three or um, uh, Square Enix and stuff like that, uh, whatever I've designed, it's just weird. Well, I'll tell you what the reaction is when I when I send them off to clients. It's just holy shit! Uh, wow. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good kind yeah. of holy shit. Wow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So how can we get that made? Like you know, and and that's the reaction I'll get, you know, and and it, it happens all the time. It's not once or twice type. It's like every time. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing as where it's kind of bizarre. It's like have you have you uh, ever had a moment then or a design that went in front of someone and someone was ballsy enough to give you an honest opinion and say, "Pope, that looks like absolute ass." What were you thinking? <laughs> uh, no, because I, I, I've been again. I've been quite fortunate that. I mean, I'll get feedback on it, and it's like, oh, well, can we change it to, you know, a little right. bit of this? Can we have, you know, maybe can you add this bit in? But I've always stipulated to, especially the clients, is you can send us all your your assets, your equity guidelines, whatever it is, you know. Mm -hmm. I'll use them as a as a rough guide, but in my world, I have to rip all them up. I have to throw them in the in the trash because. I'm not here to, you could have just used your own team to do that. You could have just used your own graphics internal team to, to create right. a, a graphic. With poop, it's, it's different, you know. It's, it's, a, it's not me being a diva or saying I'm better than everyone else. It's the fact that I, I don't do graphics. I tell stories. So it, it's almost like my interpretation of that, of seeing what I've seen. And turn it. How can I turn it into a story? How can I turn it into a memory? How can I turn it into a something that? And and that's kind of that's the difference. That is yeah. that you can't you can't you can't always find them type of people because right. um, what I do is is very unique. It's very special, um, and that's why I'll always bang the drum of like, please, you know. I, like if you see a Pope design, get it, because like, it's not me because I, I want the money. I could give a toss about the money. It, I, it, I'm not money generate generated. Mm -hmm. It's I just want you to feel special and and happy and like oh my god, you know I've got a Pope design, you know, and that's kind of all I want really, you know. Um, well, I so plan on getting one real soon, let me tell you. Uh, we're going to take a really quick break here, Pope. Uh, we're going to give a shout out to the amazing people that are here with us today. There's some uh, fantastic names and some people I'm sure you'll recognize. So let's give a shout out to the people who took a few minutes out of their uh, days or evenings to spend it with us and catch this live. And if you can't catch it live, we want to thank you for tuning in on the replay. First up, we got RWK88, a big time supporter of the Gaming Fuse podcast. We got our good friend Carlo. Uh, from uh, 4GQ TV, I think you know Italian clowns. He's in the building. Oh, he he, he he likes uh, he likes pizzas. Does he wear pineapple on? He he does. Yes. Uh, yeah. We got Sergeant Sentinel Gaming. We've also got uh, Mr. Bushido. I hope you're feeling better, my friend. I know you had a few bouts in the last year or so in the hospital. So we hope you're coming around, and I look forward to playing games with you sometime soon. The one and only, the uh, biggest moderator in the business, boss mod Lethal Papa's in the house today. Good to see Lethal hanging out with us here, as always, and making sure there's no trolls in the holes. And uh, I think we've caught up with just about everybody here. Oh, no, Game Complainers as well as my good friend Perry is in the building. Good to see you here as well, Perry. Hope you guys are enjoying the interview so far. And, yes, we did have our first question of the day, and it comes in courtesy of uh, Carlo. And let's see here. He posts this one. Pope, will you be doing anything for my friend Bruce Dickinson, lead singer of Iron Maiden? Uh, I, I can't answer. <laughs> <laughs> Odyssey, there you go. Odyssey. Can't answer. You can take that how you uh, will. <laughs> Odyssey, I, ha I have so many secrets on my head. It, it's uh, it, it's sometimes uh, I've always been quite good, you know, at, like not revealing leaks. I don't know. I don't know how I've managed to do it so for so long, but. 
it's sometimes I don't even pause, you know, to think. Uh, I just know consciously, like, not to talk about it. <laughs> it's like, right, just shut up. Don't say a thing. Yeah. Um, but one thing I really love doing, and, and I know the community say it all the time, is is I love teasing. Like, I, I just, I'm like, a, I, I just love it, you know, because I, I just think it, everything that I do, you know, it, it's not me just say, look how cool I am, I'm the best, blah, blah, blah. It, it's like literally just say, look at my cup, have some fun with me, you know. Like, mm-hmm. like, what we're going to do is we're just going to tease this bit of, bit of something, you know. Um and I think as well, you know, I, I'm always quite shocked when I hear stories of people like, oh, you know, Pope, like, you inspired me to take up art again, or you inspired me to kind of uh, just just love life again, you know, because mm-hmm. I think um, a lot of people sort of focus too dearly on, on certain things, you know, and sometimes I'll play characters within social media, and it's got, it's not, it's not me trying to um, for myself benefit. It's literally for other people to observe. So how did so how did Pope deal with that situation? How did he mm. how did he solve the problem? Because what I'm trying to do is sometimes not a, not a lot of people will actually come forward and tell you what's going on going on in their life. They're, they're quite reserved. They're quite sort of like like they're, they're just they want to tell people. They want to talk about it, but they don't know how to. Right. So I, I kind of found a way of, if not in Tim, not not not. It's almost like it's hard to say it without coming across as like being like an idiot. But I'll put myself in certain scenarios where other observers can kind of think, "Wow, well if he can do that, I can do that as well." Right. Do you know what I mean? And that's what I'm doing. Pope. You've got to remember, Pope Art is a is a is a pure character. He's he's a right. guy on a stage. He does he's not real. Just he's not. He just and that's why I can kill him. You see, I get, I think I'm on my fourth Pope at the minute. Right. Um, so well, I would I say get, that Pope. I mean, you obviously clearly understand. You understand things that not every artist can. You can give every artist the same exact tools, but not every artist can create a masterpiece. And this is the thing. Yeah. Uh, you see this all the time in every facet of life, you know, and I think it's because one, you've got to be passionate about what you do. Two, you've got to have composition. It's like everybody now thinks they're, a, you know, they're an amazing artist with a camera because everybody's got a camera on a cell phone. But just because you can shoot straight doesn't mean it's a great picture. It's yeah. all about negative space, composition, angles, lighting. And you've always understood um, the kind of uh, the material that people toss at you. It's amazing because like even when you've tossed, like, you know, the fans have always tossed this out. And, and that's always been fun in itself is watching you like within a day or two create these amazing designs. There's one in the background that I have right now, my favorite sports team. And mm-hmm. I absolutely love it. I love it because it's it's clean. It's simple, but it's very effective. It has the colors. It's you know the Edmonton Oilers, my favorite hockey team in the world. You know, and it's and it and it just looks good. It looks like definitely yeah. when you look at that, any Oiler fan would die to have that in the collection. But you you just get it. And there's very yeah. few of you out there. The only guy I know in this community who who I would put close to on your pedestal uh, when it comes to getting it is uh, Graphic God, uh, good old Jay Williams. Uh, shout yeah. out to Jay. Uh, Jay Jay has that sort of same thing that you do as well. Like he can take an idea and just it's amazing how quickly he can run with it and produce something that looks fantastic. And it, and it, and that's the simple answer is is understand your your audience or your clients really. Um, it, once once you understand who they are, how they think, how the how the how they behave, is you can inject their mannerisms into the design. You know, so mm-hmm. for for instance, sometimes I, I'll do designs that are very tactile, very touchy feely, and it's because I, I'm I'm creating that emotion of where I want people to like, oh my god, what is it? Like, oh, mm-hmm. it, what is is it leather? Is it steel? Is it wood? Is it like what is it? You know, it's mm-hmm. that curiosity, and then other times I'll 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 play on the, I'll play on, uh, color psychology. You know, so I'll use certain colors in a certain way. That triggers certain emotions in the, in the, in the brain to, to to do certain to do other things, you know. 
Um, it, it's but that's what people forget is is I've been trained by some of the the, the greatest masters um, in the industry of of what I do, like design and psychology and and, and business. You know, so um, I've just kind of gelled them all them all that knowledge. And now I have the ability to have fun with it in, in a hardware way, you know. Uh, that's all I've kind of done. Um, so I think that's kind of what makes me always unique or different. And I've never I've never been worried that anyone's stamping on my tools. You know, I've never sort of thing. oh, I better change how I, how I do things because people are catching up to us, you know. It's been the opposite effect, you know. It's been <laughs> people keep pinching my work. <laughs> It, and I learned this from a, um, a design master years ago. It's like, because people can get quite upset or quite sensitive when people pinch their work, like, you know, um, copy in or copy it and, and steal it or whatever. But he mm-hmm. used to always say it was, look at it as they're just inspired, you know, they the kind of, they just want to be like you, you know. So, that, I, by the way, so... How, how do you sort of combat that a little bit, or how do you control it to a certain degree uh, with, with your ideas being constantly stolen, so to speak, or you know that sort of stuff? Is is there anything that you have been able to do against it, or you can do, or uh, even what your current design models with cracked? Um, is there anything in place, or is it just kind of one of the things you got to roll with the punches and hope that people are smart enough to know the difference? Well, generally what tends to happen is I've built up a, a style now where I don't even have to put my name on it now. People just know it's a Pope design, you know, they're just kind of, in fact, half the time, if people don't credit us, <laughs> it's like the community just kind of go yeah, yeah, straight, that's a Pope design, you should copy, you know, you should see, see him, you should put his name on. Um, mm-hmm. But I, I'm kind of not precious to it, you know, um, but you, you can't stop it. it, it you know, I have people in China and Brazil and everywhere who just just kind of you know, run away and, and they'll just produce my designs on on, on whatever it is they do, um, and, and that's there's nothing really much you can do. You know, um, the stuff obviously I do within Cracked, yeah. There's a you know there's, there's a whole legal team of people who could you know sort it out. Um, right. But with my with my stuff, it's a little bit more. It's just part of the course. It, it, it's going to happen. Um, it's like right. when I did the Yorkshire tea stuff, you know. Them things are on eBay for like $600 and all sorts now, you know. Um, <laughs> just, just just, just, because, you know, that's 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 the problem with poor controllers is people will buy them. Some people will tre- mm-hmm. treasure them, like what I've done. Right. I've got loads in a glass case there. Um and then, then other people will just sell them for a profit, you know, which if that's right. what they want to do. You don't know their circumstances. Some people might generally be selling them because they've got they've got no food in the house or something. I don't know, but I'm not right. going to sit. I'm not going to sit there and cry about it. You know, it's it, it's it's their choice at the end of the day. You know. Mm-hmm. And if I've helped them put more food in the cupboard, that's even better. Then I've done an even better job. You know. Yeah, I suppose it's uh, it's one of those offsetting things, right? <laughs> yeah, That's, I mean that would yeah, be cool. Yeah, they sold you your controller, like... but they sold it for a good reason. You know, I mean, putting food in the house is uh, composed to buying like you know like six hundred dollars worth of dope, I guess. But yeah, well, if that's if that's what it's done, then. <laughs> In my eyes, I think that, that's uh, even better. You know, that's like oh, that's that's class. You feel you know, like you even... provided for their family involuntarily. There you go. Yeah, exactly. let Pope help you feed you. Let my controllers. Uh, I, 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 might actually, I might run with that idea actually. So, like, I, I've had like ideas where I've I've I thought I'm gonna make a co- I'm gonna make a Pope controller right, and I'm gonna take it with us, and um, I'm just gonna leave it sitting on the on a bench or something. I'll just leave it sitting in a store or like, a, like an airport or something. And then hopefully someone picks it up and they, they just kind of share it on social media going, I've just found this. Anybody know whose it is? It's like, it's yours. Yeah. It's like, or you it's know yours. what? At some point down the road too, you know, where it could be like, um, 
cracked you do a controller for cracked and perhaps it's one of those special one-offs where uh, a portion of the proceeds go to homeless or food banks or something along that line too right exactly yeah you know. there's there's loads of possibilities now um i'm kind of in this unique bub, like space now where i've gone from this guy who just messed around on social media and you know did some did some crazy de designs to now a company where you know I'm technically going to be in stores in 44 countries in the world you know and mm -hmm. when when you talk stores it's like could you imagine how many stores there is in Canada that sell hardware yeah how many uh, stores are you allowed are in the to US? Uh, are you allowed to mention some of the partner retailers or is that still an NDA thing um it's not because I don't know who it is. <laughs> like, do you think we could, would expect to see Pope controllers and crack controllers in, say, your local Walmart? Uh, definitely. I, I can't say why not, you know. That's it's, probably it's, that's it, probably the goal, I'm sure, because, I mean, Walmart uh, being pretty much the largest, uh, you know, largest place in the world, basically, for most goods. In fact, the, right the now it's already, one of the fewest places uh, we've got that still sells it, so. Uh, in fact... If you if you looked hard enough, there probably is some in there. I because I, I know you know we're busy working on the um, the other side of the world at the minute. So I know we've, you know we've done the Australia, the US, mm -hmm. Canada. Um, you know we're working on the likes of Japan and um, uh, Philippines, nice. uh, Singapore, Dubai, Saudi. All them kind of countries, and we've you know we've already got like UK, Europe, France, Germany, all the right. rest. So it's 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 getting there, you know. It's it's but it's like anything, you know. And if it's you can't just go in a country and go, uh, can you start putting these in your shops, mate? You know, right? Like, no, like you have to go for a huge, you know, huge, huge channel. Um, so just to even just them names that I've already mentioned is is like. That's a huge honor. Like that's that that you, you've. Like, how big can you go from that? You know, well, you can get the, into the Game Stops and the WalMarts. You're uh, you're pretty much set at that point. Well, I mean, I have got my branding. Well, technically, it it it's kind of coming into GameStop. Let's see. <laughs> um, so it's it, there's there's a, there's so much going on. It's 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 crazy. You know. Um, but the um, the crack stuff, I, I'm really I'm, I'm really happy with, because I finally got a, a a product that I know is got the best components in there. Nobody can sort of say, you know, for a sixty dollar controller, mm -hmm. it, it's it's a piece of rubbish plastic. No, no, this this is super well made. Like, it's unbelievable. Um, so I'm 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 really honoured that. The guys are cracked in in free mode, and you know, part of the whole embrace yes sort of family is is all kind of looking after me, mm -hmm. you know. Um, nice. Which I know a lot of people wanted it to be Xbox or Microsoft uh, for years. You know, it's like why doesn't why doesn't Microsoft hire Pope, you know, or take them on? But uh, do you know what I think it always has been enough is the fact they knew there would always be I would always be restricted. The new, the new, the way Pope works and the way he inspires people, and and he has that. He's almost like a, a, a kind of a loose cannon in a sense. They would have to put too much red tape on him. So it, 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 yeah, it, and, and I yeah, think out of I think out of respect, they they deliberately not done that. Um, it, it's not that they didn't want is the new the new the new I was. Good at what I As did. you stated, they don't want to stunt your creativity, and they also don't want to tread on established channels within their own network as well. So, because I mean, I still get to work with Bethesda. I still mm -hmm. get to work with you know a lot of the Xbox brands, Sea of Thieves, and all that. I, yeah. I still get, I still get to work yeah. with them. It's just I'm not held within the same restrictions as, as their internal guys. You know, um, yeah. I've got that uh, freedom of. Of, of movement, you know. Um, um, you obviously have been showing one of one of your controllers. Can you show us a couple more if you got any handy there? Maybe you can hold them up to the screen so people uh, can see. But the 
Well, I've only just picked the, you know, the Hellboy up. Yeah. Which... Can you hold it a little closer? Oh. There you go. Yeah, that looks nice. That's clean. It's a nice color scheme. The red really pops on that thing. And well, you said par yeah. part of the deal there too is not just the art, but it's the it's the build quality. They went all out and put some high oh. quality components in these things. Yeah, so you've got that, is uh, probably the most biggest complaint we see in all of the the current model controllers out there. No matter what exactly. platform, everybody complains it, about that. It was funny because when I when I did blossom when I designed, everyone just does blossom as flowers, you know. And I was like, right. how how boring yawn. So I kind of created I kind of created blossoms out of splatters. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So I kind of just kept drawing lots of splatters until it looked like some blossom, you know. Um, uh, but yeah, it's kind of fun. It's clean. Nice. It, it's got me a little prototype sticker on there. That's what that is. If yeah, you, I like that. That's say, cool. Yeah, I see the Pope Art name there on the back. Because all my stuff that I've got over there. Like, yeah. Well, I'll show you all them stuff over there. That's, oh, look at that. There are like literally half of them. Well, most of them in there are all prototypes, you know. Um, yeah, for all you guys in the chat, I did put a link in there to the website where you can go and pre-order Pope's designs right now. So it is in the chat. I think I brought it up. I'll bring it up on the screen so you can see it. I uh, get a chance to check it out here. So here it is. I'll bring it up on the screen. And you know, like just recently, as part of the cracked, uh, I had um, technically, in a sense, my own little first booth. At a games event. Oh, that's so, sweet! Awesome. So I kind of hope I'm I'm going to be like part of Gamescom as well, um, over in the UK, uh, Europe, and Germany. Yeah. Uh, so how how did how did that go? Uh, being at a booth and stuff. What kind of questions did you get? Oh, I did go. I I, I, I sat in the house, me man. Put my feet <laughs> up. No, it's it's certain places. Just logistically, it's a it's a bit of a nightmare for me to go to, you know. But right, um, uh, you know, apparently people on there were just absolutely in awe. They love the love the night the neo, the love the nitro deck. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, you know, it's it's a ever evolving company. It's still fairly infant in its in its age. That you know, there's going to be other bits of hardware that we can start to do, you know. Um, mm -hmm. Um, so I'm I'm looking forward to the future um, of that, but it's kind of weird at the same time because everyone knows us for doing stuff on co uh, Xbox controllers or PlayStation. So I think sometimes it's probably hard for them to think, well, what the what's Pope doing on that for? Like, what is it? You know. Right. Um, so there's been a lot of change with my brand at the minute, where I'm trying to sort of kill that kind of perception and and move it and tweak twisted a little bit to, um right so people so people know that yes i still do stuff with xbox and playstation but dominantly it'll be a lot of you know this kind of stuff you know mm -hmm. um and and that's fine you know um it, it's like anything you know it's it's like not to go too deep into what's going on in the game world at the minute because i tend not to go like too deep, but there's a lot of change happening within the industry, you know. Um, and I think it's good for people to 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 drift away from what they say is normal, right? You know, and 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 try try a new. I mean, they're amazing. Right? Just try yeah. it. You're in. It's only like you know, fifty dollars. So, Pope is the is the design work now your primary job, or do you sort of work a regular job and this is like in your spare time kind of deal? No, no, this, this, this is my, this is my job now. This is your bread uh, and butter. Yep. Okay, uh, so that means that means you spend a lot of hours every day with concepts and designs and all sorts of things. Constantly, constantly. Yeah. Do, you, do you often do you start uh, with traditional like two D with sort of drawing things out, or is it pretty much you're you're working on a computer straight from the get go? It's um, I tell you, well, it used to be pen and paper. That's yeah. how it used to be pen, the old pen and paper. And then now it's uh, it's probably I probably haven't got a charge now. I've got like just a giant iPad mm -hmm. with, a, with a pen, and I have like software on there that I just can kind of draw. And then uh, once I've got a, a kind of sketch in my head and the layout, and then I'll either transfer that into a three D software where I can create 
you know, three dimensional elements, or I might just take it straight to Photoshop and, you know, do certain things. Um, and that, that, that's kind of it, really. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, I wish I had some of those programs. I don't have anything like that now. So, uh, but yeah. <laughs> well, that, 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 that there, that Procreate in there, it's only, it's only yeah. a tenner. It's just, it's only $10. It's not like it's, oh, wow. it's, not, it's not an expensive software, um, but you can create some beautiful lines, you know, beautiful shapes and, mm -hmm. and, and stuff like that, you know. And even if you're not like cool with drawing, the more you do it, the better you get. You know, it's like anything, right. you know. Right. Um, exactly. So it's, but I think a lot of people and hopefully poor bit kind of kicks their ass a little bit is, is the fact that they're kind of scared. You know, they think, oh, well, I'm never going to be like popular. Like, oh, why do I even attempt? But then once upon a time, I was probably like there. I'm thinking, well, I'm never going to be like a Picasso. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, do you know what I mean? It's once you get over that hurdle, then you're not trying to be somebody else. You're trying to be yourself, really. Exactly. But you, you have to be somebody to then find your style. Then you become your own person it's probably like your podcasting thing you know you a lot of people yeah. probably inspired you and you thought oh that's kind of cool way of communicate that's kind of cool way of doing it but then eventually after you've finished sort of not you know mimicking these people but learning from them you've created your own way of like you know injecting your own style into into podcasting you know um absolutely and, and I, and it's it's the same with the art industry. It's the same with how how a person drives, or you know, it, it doesn't really matter. It's yeah, uh, but you always need somebody to inspire to first, you know. Absolutely, you got to have a you got to have a goal. You got to set uh, set a bar, and then you got to figure out how you want to how you want to hit your own you know set of achievements essentially. But yeah, like you got to find your personality. I'm glad that your personality and you know your your creativity is coming through in your new line of work. And it looks like I said you're off to a good start and finally getting you know so like I said that worldwide recognition. You know you went from kind of being uh, you know an inspirational artist that kind of did things on the side for fun to to getting a lot of notoriety through the community and uh -huh. uh, your designs getting you know worldwide recognition. And I'm super happy for you, man. It sounds like yeah. you know. Uh, you're heading in the right direction and only bigger, better things to come. I'm sure. I, I mean, for the buying I mean, some of, of your soon here. I mean, one of the things I've obviously had to do is kind of pull, pull a little bit back on the, on the whole social thing. But what I've always said, even to the people who, you know, the, 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 the big, the big bosses who kind of look out for Pope and stuff is, is that I can't change. I can't, it's important that I don't change how he communicates with people, you know, that, that, that's the important part of Pope, you know, it's not just about the fan art. It's not about the pictures. It's that having a, having a funny little joke. Like I, I like, I see a lot of people's birthdays, you know, and rather than going happy birthday, which sounds quite boring, really, as okay. Happy old thoughts day, you know, like it's just right. daft little things like that, which sounds quite childish really. And it is childish, but it's, it's just, keeping Pope away from being that serious thing, you know, that's why he doesn't right. get involved in politics, that's why he doesn't get involved in uh, these console war things or whatever people do, you know, it's 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 just the fact that he's just there if someone's having a shit day come and see me, I'll make you smile you know, or I'll, I'll make I'll make you sort of thing and I love it when people come to me it, it's really, I know it sounds daft when you, you could say, well, you don't come to me. I go, I see my timeline. <laughs> you know, I'd say, mm -hmm. I've got clients coming, hitting us from all different directions. I've, I've got a family to support. I've got I've got so much going on. Sometimes I, I forget to even breathe, you know. Um, yeah. and, and so I love it when people come to me and go, how's it going, Pope? How are you doing? I think you've hit us up a few times and I love it, you know. I think, oh, fucking hell, let's do Great, I have done all right, you know. Well, like I said, man, you've you've inspired me. I mean, just like I said, I'm I'm just honored to be, you know, that you're here taking an, an hour out of your time to be uh, on my little gig. You know, like I said, I've had nothing but love and respect for you since the day I met you and and saw your 
you know, just oh yeah, scared. It's and, a sin for and me. the fact that you could take all that time out of your schedule, you know, to, to go and, and do these little small things for like people that ask you requests, well, can you do me this console and can you do me this controller? Yeah. You know, I would see this. That, that, that's, uh, that means that, a lot. That means a lot to people more than you think, Pope. Like that, you took that time out to create a bit of art that represents them, uh, but done with your talents. Yeah, I hope. I kind of hope so because, you know, it, it's a lot of it's a lot of my free time to give up, but I I don't do it to to gain anyone's respect or loyalty or whatnot. It's literally it's as it's as easy as. All I'm trying to do is put a smile on your face. It's as simple as that. It, it's so, and that's the other thing I'll always say to people about Pope is it's important to, to treat them a bit like a free spirit. You know, unfortunately, I can't be everyone's mate or friend. You know, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's kind of crazy, but I'm always here. You know, I'm like, anytime you just think, you know, it is, I'm bored to speak to Terry and Dave the day. Now it is, I'm going to speak to Pope the day instead, you know. Where is he? Where is he? Fuck, you know, it, it's as simple as that. It really is, you know. I'll see it eventually. And uh, and I'm probably rendering stuff in the background. I go, oh, I'll speak to this guy for 10 minutes, you know. Um, and, and and that's it, really. It's cool. Um, mm-hmm. But no, I think, I think, you know, I've seen you you also develop within, within the podcast, like I say, from the crazy days to, to doing what you're doing now. And I think even just what you're doing right now should be a sign of what you should be doing in the future. You know, it's like, I've got, I've got a huge wealth of people who are no like really sort of exclusive top end people who mm-hmm. probably think actually it'd be quite cool to talk on a podcast where it's just one-to-one, you know, it's, it's, well, it's not like I haven't tried Pope, to be honest, I've sent out numerous invitations over the years and for whatever reason, some people oblige and other people just seem to, Tell me they're going to come on, and then I never hear a word from them. But oh, uh, not- no, I've, I've got my theories about that, and I think uh, I think there's there are certain contingent of people that have new new sort of blacklist in the community because I've always had a very if you know me you you know that you know I'm an old school gamer with uh, some pretty hard opinions on things at times, and I certainly ruffle a lot of feathers. And uh, <laughs> you know, like I said, that's where people people just. Um, they kind of just they take certain things and run with it, and that's where they like to play the console war card. And instead of yeah. just you know taking your opinion and just okay, well, I don't agree with you, but then you're a pony or you're an Xbox, and you're a, they they start labeling you into a group, and they call you a traitor, and they call you this, and they call you that. Yeah. So uh, it's been one of those things, Pope. But you know, I'm trying not to read too much into it. I just uh, I just got burned out a little bit on this stuff and um, putting that certain expectations on that and yeah. and seeing the growth. Um, my growth kind of go to a point where it was doing really good. And then it just it stagnated and hit like a like a freaking roadblock and went backwards. So it is what it is. But anyway, I didn't I didn't bring you on here to chirp about that. On with me today because I think it's important to put guys like yourself in front of the community so people get to know a little bit more about you and how you got but started you, and, and where you're but at. You know, but you know, but you know, you know the whole the whole thing of Pope and the reason why you've got him on here is not is yet to talk about that. But then there is that side of Pope that he's always done that. He's always done it for every single person. Is I could you think I'm not saying anybody. I see everyone on social media. I see exactly what's going on with Noof. I see that exactly what's been going on with you know certain people in there, even probably people in this got chat. too big for Noof Nukem, Pope. That's what happened, man. And uh, you know what, what I'm saying is right. Is I, I see. I'm not daft. I see exactly what's going on. And Pope's job is about trying to say not fix things but just move nudge people on a on a on a different path let's say absolutely it's you know and this is kind of all i'm doing to you is i probably have them same thoughts and them same enemies in my head because obviously i've created this huge success story and like you say there's a lot of jealous people um but if i kind of if i kind of sat in that space all day long thinking about it i would never progress to the next level you know what i mean so i i think i think with you 
it's not about how you do things or how you say things because that, that, that then it wouldn't be enough. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it, I think it's just about drowning out all the other people and just yeah. uh, and just fo- just go fucking hell with it. You know, it's like I don't care. Like I, I've totally isolated myself. It's on social media now. Totally, I'll still talk to people. Obviously, like you know, but I have to because otherwise I'll never move forward. You know, um, mm-hmm. I'll be con- I'll be constantly in that rut of. Oh well, have I upset this person today? Oh, have I, oh, have I broke this person's heart? Well, hey, who you know? If if I if it, it unfollow so somebody is broke someone's heart, well, dear God, I would hate to think what happens when someone punches them in the face or something. You know, it's like Jesus. It's like it's just a button, mate. You know, it's like literally it's just a button. <laughs> like, Stop getting so like, guys. I'm glad I don't have the talent of the Pope art here because I'd probably be making controllers with a big old dildo on them. So every time they vibrate, it looked like the dick got loose in your hand. <laughs> I tell you what, people, people, people hey, there's an industry for it. I tell you, <laughs> uh, the there new goes. haptic feedback controller. Yeah, there you go. You see, got it, got a new line of uh merch coming out. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, you know, I don't want to keep you here too long, but what is next for Pope Art? Uh, where do you see the next um, progression? Are you just kind of obviously trying to see this stuff get off the ground? Based on the website, uh, the crack website, it looks like, again, they're not quite ready. You can't – oh, no, they are available now, some of it, right? But some of it is still in, in pre-order phase? Yes. So Neos will be going out very soon, and I think that that will be good because that will give a lot of people, you know – a feel for this thing you know what does it feel like and, and how does it perform because you can obviously put these into turbo modes you can put these into different modes as well you know not many people know this but they're very flexible to what you can do with one of these it's not just like linking up a, an xbox controller you know they're they're, they're, they're they're pretty powerful pieces of kit and um the the next stages for me is just exactly what you see i mean there's, there's obviously stuff I, I can't even can't even sort of hint on, you know. Um, mm. But there's other stuff where um, there's a lot coming out for Pope. I've got a big meeting tomorrow, um, which you know is it's just unbelievable. Um, in Noof, I, I just wake up like this, you know. I literally, I'll wake up. <laughs> and I'll check my email like an old man because I am an old man. Look at this, one, grey. I got silver fox. Uh, well, that's it. You 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 work at home too, right? Yes. See, that's yeah, that's yeah. that's pretty cool in itself that you get to do what you do, but you you don't have to get up and drive, you know, fifty or sixty kilometers to go. Ah, uh, uh, gone to them days, man. No, I don't have to drive anywhere. So literally, I wake up and I'll check me. I go, who who the fuck's that? Like, eh? Who was it? And then I check them out on LinkedIn, and they're like some big, massive CEO of some huge company. I'm like, eh, what the hell they're following me for? And then so <laughs> like, and then I'm checking them out. Going, eh, what, is it, is this like a scab? I bet it's a, I bet it's like just a bot or something, you know? Right. So then I, I forward it to my like to my sort of legal team, you know, and they go, oh, no, that's proper legit. <laughs> Your X Man's got a question for you. He says, "Pope, do you get really good support from different manufacturers?" Yes. Uh, well, now especially also now because it, it's like a full-on proper like this factory, right? That, that I use mm-hmm. now. It prints the freaking circuit boards, man. <laughs> it like makes all the circuit boards, so then it then it, you know all the plastic gets molded in, and it, it, it's like it's like imagine. Xbox making controllers. It's like it's exactly that. That's that's how it all happens now for Pope. It's like they're super top tier stuff, you know. It's not like Steve in his back back uh, utility room or his garage, you know, <laughs> putting like some figured hydro dipping in a tank or something, you know. You're not it's, back there putting them together one at a time, eh? <laughs> no, they're literally they're literally these things are all my stuff now is built from the ground up. It's it's um, it's it's crazy how it's. But I still do them things, you know. I still yeah. help the I still help the smaller teams, um, and, and I could easily walk away from them, you know. Um, but I, I just think 
sometimes it, it's nice to su support small businesses. You know, uh, I think I think it it we should all stick together as small businesses because I, I, that's what I was when I first started. You know, um, I, I just I just got lucky, um, or or the fact that you know someone um, yeah took us on. You know, after but, seeing yeah. the. The latest SpongeBob special controller for the SpongeBob rehydrated game on Xbox, and they were doing a giveaway. Scalpers apparently uh -huh. out there buying uh, buying them up and reselling them. But like I've kind of mentioned to you earlier in the show, like you know, I, I think the Xbox Series S and Series X, you know, really lend themselves to uh, custom designs more so than perhaps previous designs in the past, even the wraps kind of thing. So. Do you, do you think there's any particular reason why Microsoft really hasn't uh, really jumped on board with this? Because you know how much they're behind the, the the design labs controllers and letting people pick their own colors. But like I, I, everybody that I talked to in the community and I'm are like, man, why haven't Xbox capitalized on custom consoles or like I said, wraps and things like that? Uh, like they used to in the past was a lot more prevalent. So mm. do, you, do you ever think do you have a reason why they're not? not really doing that so much now i mean obviously i i know i know a lot of things that kind of goes on mm -hmm. behind the scenes but it's not really for me me to sort of really right say top line other than i just think that they're too focused on because you, you know every so basically every single business right it always has to start off with a 10-year plan it, it, it has to. So it starts off with 10 years, then you, you trip it down to what, what you're going to do in five years, what you're going to do in two, what you're going to do in one, what you're going to do in the, the next few months. So I think their top line 10 year is, is, is what they're doing. So these bits that you're seeing now, I, I, like I've I seen the fallout controllers, I've seen the, the other stuff that we're doing. And then I've seen these camo style ones that they're doing. But then I also see the people commenting on, well, where's the games? Where's the games? Where's the game? But I think I think the games are there. It's just they're using this maybe they're using this hardware just as, as a bit of a gap filler. Do you know what I mean? Keep the you know, keep the pennies coming in, you know, the keep the, the um because otherwise if they had all this sort of hardware, why would they not just keep it and do right. like what you're saying? I know there was rumors they wanted to put me in Design Lab at one stage. I think there was talks. And I think Japan and stuff like that were like super on board. Um, but then, you know, there's, there's I think once you, you start sort of being quite well known in an industry, there's always going to be the, the camp that love you. But there's also going to be the camp that hate you, you know, because right. um, when you start when you start being involved in a in a bigger industry, like a bigger corporate corporation, everyone's after your job, really, you know, because <laughs> uh, you know, so people some, some people will climb over you, you know, just to get well, get to where they want to be. So um, unfortunately, that's what happens, you know, um, and it's. So yeah, it would have been would it it might have been nice, but then going back to my other comment before, I think it was always destined that that I was always gonna be going down this route, you know. Right. Um, which suits me because it means I'm I'm I can play I can play all day now. Well, speaking of playing, we've got another question coming in from our good friends for <laughs> X-Man says, What has been your favorite game over the past couple of years? And what are you currently uh, been playing? Uh, solitaire whilst I'm rendered. No, um, well, Noof, Noof knows because I, I've done community game nights, but yeah, uh, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm definitely back in there too, sir. I know. It, do you know what stops us? It's bloody time zones, man. Yeah, it's literally you're like fresh as a daisy. It's like three o'clock in the morning for me. It's like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, we started at like five mountain, which is seven eastern. So, yeah, that's like 12 o'clock in the morning for you. Exactly, and Mrs. Port would be happy with me, like you know, clattering around <laughs> at that sort of time. No, I think well, I've always loved me Titanfall, you know, as you know. But um, if I'm chilling, I actually play a lot of Sniper, Sniper Elite. 
Yeah. Um, just because I, I think it's a type of game where I always try and sort of see if I'm going to get the longest ball shot, right? I'm going <laughs> to get it right the right with the testicles. Right the so like, like 600 yards or whatever it is. 600 meters or whatever, you know? And I'm, I'm, I still haven't got there yet, but I'm determined to. But it's a game where you can do that. And you can have it on the same screen all day long. It doesn't time you out. <laughs> um, Here you go, guys. If we ever go to war and you find a bunch of people in the fields missing their balls, it was Pope. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it's funny because, like, when we used to do community game night, you know, it would be like, oh, for fuck's sake, you know, Pope's killers again, you know. <laughs> Yeah, well, we'll have to do a special community game night at a better time and give you some heads up on it. We'll let you know we're planning to roll Titanfall 2 again. Yeah, uh, oh, honestly, I love that game so much. It's, uh, yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm not good at it, you know. I'm rubbish, I'm totally trash at it, you know. But I just love it because it's just big robots and stuff, you know. Yeah, it's, it's like, fun. The last time we played was a couple of weeks back uh, when we reintroduced community game night and went really well. So a lot of the guys that are in the chat here play it. Oh, well, that's good. Uh, I recognize yeah, a lot of the names in the in there. Yeah, we got Tim A is here, like said, Sir X Man, Mr. Bushida. We got Q Cumber in the building. It's good to see you here. Game completers, Punches yeah. AK Perry. He's hanging been hanging out with us. Uh, Lethal Pop in the building earlier, and uh, lots of amazing people. Boozy the Clown was here. 4G QTV was hanging out with us. So, yeah, just an incredible group of people in the chat today. Oh, and I mean, it's amazing because obviously I recognize a lot of those names from like years ago as well. It's not like, yeah. like I said, it's not like I'm ignoring anyone or think, oh, you know, I don't speak to them anymore. It's just literally, I don't have zero time. <laughs> yeah. uh, we, we understand, man. We understand you're busy and uh, that, that's life. You know, that's what I always say to people. It, it fascinates me when I see some people online like doing four podcasts and yet they're still getting platinum trophies in games and getting like all this stuff and they're beating like game after game. I'm like, where do you find the time? Because I, I can't do it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you get three hours of sleep a night and you play seven and eight <laughs> hours a day, but just some, some of these guys and the stuff they're pulling off. I'm like, I don't know how you do it because if I had to spend that much time playing games, my wife would have me divorced. Oh, uh, so I'll be in the similar similar boat, you know. Um, but no, I'm 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 happy, new fam. I found me happy place, you know. It's it, fabulous, it's, man. It it's took a while. You. It's took a while to get there, and you know, you can see a lot of ups and downs. But I think you've got to experience them. You know, you've got to have your you've got to have your you know your ass kicked along the way because it just. Once you get to the final end, you're as hard as nails, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just like, um, so now I'm just, I, I'm just hard as nails now. I reckon. Now I've still got a big, daft, soft heart. Well, that's the main thing, man. That's what keeps you human. And like I said, you got to have a laugh once in a while and take things with a grain of salt and not take life too seriously. And you know, and uh, hopefully everybody will go out and get their hands on a Pope controller hero soon. Well, I, I could be as little. I could be as. Uh, a, a tad rude, but just not noof nukem rude. Uh, I can't, I can't go there yet. <laughs> I probably lose. I hear, lose I hear you, brother. I hear you. <laughs> All righty. Well, I think that kind of brings us to the end of the program. Uh, is there any final words or things that you'd like to uh, share with us? Perhaps I haven't asked. Um, no, I think. Um, apart from when I, I, I got that spare room sorted for when I come visit. Absolutely. There's always room at my place for you, brother. You come into Canada, let's do it. Yeah, oh, I'm definitely coming over. In fact, I'm going to try and make a job where I have to go to Canada for the job. Absolutely. Absolutely. You got to come over, man. Absolutely. We'd love to have you. I'm trying. Lots of space. As long as you're not allergic to cats, because I got four orange ones. That's the main thing. Oh, you got, you got four ginger cats? I got four gingers here. Yeah, you betcha. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you bet. Toffee, caramel, Dorito, and uh, Cheeto. <laughs> that's a hell. I used to have a cat. <laughs> I used to have a cat. I used to have a cat once many years ago. Mm -hmm. um, it, it sort of went out and never come back home. Oh, yeah, um, I've heard that too. 
What's that? All right, guys, I put the website up on the up on the uh, right now. So if you want to check out uh, Pope's latest designs, you can go right there to crack.gg. So uh, make sure that you highlight that and go check out some of the works that are on that website and perhaps pre-order the uh, – there's a few different models right now. Like I said, you can get your hands on a Nitro deck for your Switch. Uh, and again, a whole lineup of Neo S coming out here real soon. Uh, he showed one off here on the program. So there is that model, and there will be a bunch of other ones. Really cool stuff, guys. And premium controllers, too. So, And we're going to do a giveaway for a Pope controller in the next couple of months. So I'm going to get my hands on a couple of these and uh, when they go live, and I'll be doing a giveaway here. Uh, on this show. Yeah, that's very nice here. All right, Pope. So uh, without further ado, let people know where they can catch up with you and, um, you know, social media wise or where have you. Um, well, I, I call it, I still call it Twitter me like, but Twitter X, Twi Twix is, yes. uh, is what we call it. Um, Pope Art underscore. The reason I had it like, have the underscore because there is a Pope out out there, and mm -hmm. he's in South. He's in South Africa. And he's only got twenty six followers. And <laughs> I was like, "You shit!" You know, he got the Pope or the you know. So I had to kind of put the under. But then I kind of like the underscore now because it, it looks like when I when I when I do my signature, it's like whoosh, you know, like little whoosh, little flick on the end. Um, so yeah, or Pope well, gonna, Designs. I'm gonna put it. I'm gonna put the, your thing in the chat as it is on social media here, so that I'll put it up on the screen so people can uh, have a chance. To there you go, you guys. So of... if you're looking for the exact name online, there you go. Yeah. Uh, it's obviously Pope Pope Art Designs on Instagram. I, I tend to just I, I I very rarely chat on Instagram. I just use it as a there you go. There's some pictures. It, it's like they're stored there forever. <laughs> It's like they go, you know, because half the time people go, have you done it? Uh, have you done a such and such controller? I oh, just got me Instagram. It's all there. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go, guys. Follow them on Instagram if you like. Follow them on uh, on the X app. And obviously, like I said, go check out that website at cracked.gg and check out some of the designs and more to come from the talented Pope Art. Well, Pope, again, thanks for your time today. I won't keep you any longer. It's getting late in your neck of the woods. And, uh, yeah, well, hopefully we'll have you back at some point in time. If you've got a big development coming up in the near future or or down the road, just let me know. We'd love to have you back on, and hopefully yeah. we'll get you back on a community game night as well. Yeah, definitely. I would love to um, come back. We'll do it. We'll do a, a, a revisit, like you say. When Sounds good, man. Well, take care. And to all the people in the chat today, you guys are amazing. Thanks for coming out. And to those catching this on the replay, feel free to hit that like, comment, subscribe. And uh, go, like I said, go check Pope out in his work. And hopefully you guys go, go buy some uh, controllers to make you smile, make you happy. <laughs> take a little piece of Pope art with you wherever you go. Take care, okay. Pope. We'll catch you soon, brother. Hey, thank you. Bye.